I got to a stage where I was very, very uh, frustrated with the poor advice that was given to mm. the farming community. Good on you. <laughs> but also the, the excellent science that scientists have been doing in the Crown Research Institute and the DSIR prior to that for decades, um, for three and a half decades in my case, wasn't being translated to the farm. We we're doing some really good science. And this, you can see it graphically illustrated in terms of our nutrient emissions into the waterways, into our lakes, groundwater systems, which the EW and regional councils are struggling with at the moment. And also with the ETS, the emission trading scheme that the government are putting together. Um, those two aspects graphically demonstrate the lack of transition of the excellent science that has been done to the farm gate, and more importantly, the uptake by the farmer beyond the farm gate. Yeah, sure. And the science is not making its way to this uh, situation. So from a climate change perspective, we've got a situation where it is slowly dawning on a lot of the researchers involved that agriculture has the most significant role to play of any part. In fact, the farmers can literally, and are the only segment that can literally save the planet. For every problem you come up against, and you will come up against some challenges, there is always a solution. There is always an organic solution. But keep taking it back to nature, keep taking it back to the soil, and is that the, get it right in the soil, and everything else eventually follows down the track. You need a bit more lime too, uh, like I was saying over there. Dandelions. When you see dandelions in a paddock, you need lime. Simple as that. And that's because the clover is not spreading enough to cover the bare patches. Mm -hmm. And there's dandelion seeds everywhere, so they grow in the bare patches. But we changed that by going to the Agricultural Research Centre to see what they were doing with peat and then applied it. And this was drainage, liming, chisel ploughing, sowing the right pasture and, and clover seeds. Then you have to put the right fertilisers on, which means analysing the pastures and applying up to 17 elements. And unfortunately there's still many farms who don't farmers who don't use those known principles now. Biological is the word that should be used, not organics, because uh, organics is the clean green that everybody's been brainwashed to think, and it, it's definitely not like that. Whereas biological is a far better system. If you fix the soil, most of the problems just come right naturally, and I think it's a far better end result. These clays are very high magnesium clays, mm -hmm. uh, so that's why they're fairly tight clays. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we've proved on our other property that we can uh, knock the magnesium levels down. Uh, we've took it from 26% uh, magnesium um, down to, uh, we actually took it too far, took it down to about 8% by uh, putting on uh, calcium um, and it's back up to about 13% now. But on this farm, uh, this soil here at the moment is about 15% um, and we're slowly working we're taking it slower at, at um, putting, putting calcium on slower than what we did on the other farm because we released too much uh, potassium and uh, we don't want to cause any animal health uh, issues. Uh, the reason that got us interested in organics was I guess my father had been farming for 35, 40 years and he'd, he'd seen farming decline really in that time we put on more and more um, artificial fertilisers and our inputs were, were going up and up and we had to keep adding more and more things to keep our cows healthy and alive and he just thought, well geez, there's got to be a better way. So um, that's when we started messing around with organics and I guess we, we're, we're liking what we're seeing now. Well we're farming in Tiara. We're milking uh, 300 odd cows. 3.5 to the hectare. We're, we're using the uh, uh, sulfuric acid based fertiliser. We got into a urea syndrome where we just had to keep putting it on and on and on. Uh, we decided that uh, this must be something better than this. So by accident uh, we got onto uh, Vermicast 
we did the whole farm with it. Uh, 500 case a hectare, twice a year. The worm population increased was phenomenal. Animal health was good. And production was good. Journalists say, you know, they say, oh, you use some probatase, your fertilizer program and all that. But it's only part of your program. Um, you know, I only use 200 kilograms of probatase a year, which is stuff all, really. And then the trace elements, and right in the trace elements, like boron at four, copper at five, zinc at four, selenium at one. Been on the probatase program, uh, my animal health it's costs improved. have improved yeah. remarkably. Now that Fonterra's gone away from paying on protein, well, combining the fat and protein together, I've gone looking at the different genes in the protein, and A2 gene is one, one of the genes I've been looking at, and uh, building up a herd of A2 uh, cows to sell milk with A2. I've seen the results in children with autism and children that can't drink milk, that can drink A2 milk. So that's uh, another line of down the protein, but I still feel there's more to develop. And now that I'm looking at the health of the, my cows and going away from chemical fertilizers, I'm looking at uh, selling raw milk and seeing the advantages of um, using raw milk and not destroying the enzymes in the milk. But the best uh, form of uh, medicine is actually uh, through the diet. Um, we try to have uh, a range of uh, species in the pasture. Um, can't see too much here, it was the cows have eaten it, but you know, chicory and plantain, docks, um, yarrow, uh, as well as uh, trees and flax. We're trying to get trees and flax around every uh, paddock so the cows can uh, self-medicate off uh, those. Hi, I'm Tina Kerr, I'm homeopathic farm support. And homeopathic farm support is a business that helps farmers who want to use homeopathy. And the goal of homeopathic farm support is to have the farmers uh, um, use homeopathy in a correct, in a safe and a gentle way. The way that we actually started with organic principles and then moved through into biodynamics, which is a just a bridge of organic, which is a wee bit more intense and a wee bit more working in a holistic approach, more so than perhaps the modern day organic systems are.